In this video we're going to be manually testing an O2 sensor to make sure it works. Now we'll be testing the heater element inside if you do have that inside the O2 sensor and also whether it produces voltage correctly. So before I start I will say one little caveat with this test is that you can test the heater element inside these and you can test that they produce voltage. One thing you cannot do is uh, test the voltage response, what maybe it's um, responding slowly or anything like that. So this video is designed just to sort of teach you about O2 sensors and how they work and how you can sort of test them in a limited way off the vehicle. And really the best way to test these is using an OBD2 reader to connect it to the ECU and plot a graph on real-time voltage. That way we can test what voltage they produce under actual running circumstances and also check for a slow response rate as well which is something you cannot really do with this test. Now I'll just talk really briefly about the job of an O2 sensor just for those of you that aren't sure. Now a combustion engine generally uh, has 14.7 parts air to one part fuel and that is a perfect mixture in order for the engine to run correctly. When we initially start the vehicle, the vehicle operates in what's called open loop mode and that is where the ratio, 14.7 to 1, is based off things like coolant temperature and the readings from the mass airflow sensor or MAP sensor. So the car will use those tools in order to maintain this magic ratio, 4.7 to 1. So each car, year, make and model will have certain conditions in, in order to put the car into closed loop mode. Now it does really depend on the year, make and model of vehicle, but generally once this element in here reaches around 600 degrees Fahrenheit, it's producing voltage. There may be numerous other things as well. It will go into what's called closed loop mode. And that is where the car listens to the voltage produced by the O2 sensor. Uh, O2 sensors in order to maintain the magic ratio 4.7 to 1. So what happens is if the car is running rich uh, this will respond by uh, monitoring the gases coming out of the exhaust manifold and run a higher voltage. When the ECU in the car detects the high voltage it knows it's running kind of rich so what it will do then is reduce the pulse width of the fuel injectors to in inject less fuel into the mixture to maintain the ratio. And the opposite also applies. It will uh, open the it sort of open the pulse width um, to spray more fuel in to maintain the ratio if it detects a lean condition. That is really, in a nutshell, in a very simplified way, how O2 sen sen sensors work in the vehicle. And these are the upstream O2 sensors that it uses to maintain the ratio. So these are the ones before the catalytic converter, so pre-cat or bank X sensor 1, so all sensor 1s. The downstream O2 sensors are really just to monitor the efficiency of the catalytic converter. So we'll be looking at the really the upstream ones which maintain this air to fuel ratio. That's what they do. Let's go and test them. So the easiest way to test an O2 sensor, providing that your engine is in good condition so it's not running rich or lean and throwing off readings like crazy, is to use an ODB2 scan tool. I've linked it in the description below. And what this does, using an app like Talk or Dash Command or something like that for your phone even, you can link this to Bluetooth to the app and it can record the voltage which is produced from the O2 sensor. And, that, and you can use that to determine whether the O2 sensor is working well. I will have another video on that. For the purpose of this uh, tutorial, we're going to heat the O2 sensor ourselves manually and determine whether it works that way. So as I mentioned briefly before, if there's something really wrong with your engine or you just can't test this with a vehicle, then we can use this method to work out if our O2 sensor is working correctly. And that's the heater element inside and also whether it's producing voltage once heated up. So there are various types of uh, O2 sensors. This is a four-wire O2 sensor, so it's an indication it has a heater element inside. And that gets the car into closed loop quicker, so the car can respond to real-time feedback and it runs more efficiently. So a one-wire sensor, if you only have one wire going into here, uh, the one-wire sends a voltage reading to the ECU and it's grounded on the exhaust pipe chassis, so it's just grounded on the housing here. Uh, a two-wire sensor will have a a voltage wire and a ground wire. Now a three wire and a four wire sensor, they're the ones that usually have the heater element inside. 
And the difference between the three wire and the four wire is that the three wire, like the one wire, is grounded on the exhaust chassis and the four wire has its own ground wire. So the first thing we're going to do is test the heater element inside to make sure it's heating properly and the car can get into closed loop quicker. So when testing the heater element in the O2 sensor, we're going to be measuring for uh, resistance, which is ohms. 200 is a good maximum for ohms. It will read around 5 to 6 ohms, depending on the spec. If you don't have the spec, then again around 5 to 6. You may need to look it up, but it's safe to say if you don't get a reading, the heater element doesn't work. So uh, put your probes in the ohm setting, which is this little omega sign here. So these two. On this sensor, the heater element wires are the two white wires. But if you probe around, put your probes on combinations of two pins, only one will measure a uh, resistance. On this one, it's the white wires, but you'll know because you'll get a reading. If you don't get a reading on any combination of the two wires, providing you don't have a spec to know which ones they are, then it's safe to say the heater element inside is not working correctly. So um, there we go, we've got our crocodile clips here on the uh, two white wires for the heater and it's reading around 5.8 ohms, which is, which is a pretty good uh, resistance for this O2 sensor which is off a of 4 Mustang GT. Again, your results may vary, but this is a good figure to assume that the heater element is working in the O2 sensor. If you have a check engine light and the code points to O2 heater sensor malfunction, then uh, this is the sort of element we're testing here. Uh, depending on the year, make, and model and car, generally there will be a code for the heater sensor in here. And again, this method confirms the, uh, uh, the error code and your diagnosis here. So the second and last test we're going to do is to uh, test for voltage. So this is DC volts, so we're going to go to 20 volts here because the voltage it produces, as I mentioned, was between 0.1 and 0.9 volts. So this is a good maximum for this. Uh, we were testing our heater element before on the two white wires. So guaranteed it will be the other two wires we'll be looking at now based on a four wire sensor and that will be the signal wire and the ground wire so it will be the grey and black on this particular sensor so once we've probed those two for the uh, signal and ground wires so the opposite of the heater ones we need to get this to 600 degrees how you do that is up to you you can use propane you can use butane you can use a gas cooker it's really up to you what we're going to do is heat this uh, sort of dongle part of the sensor here get it up to temperature and then start reading the voltage readings from the multimeter very simple so before I start heating this up a typical reading of a well-behaving O2 sensor is actually not a solid voltage it oscillates from 0.1 to 0.9 volts on a, on a graph it will look like this so it'll be like a continuous sine wave or a continuous amplitude. So on here, on this digital multimeter, a good reading is bouncing between the lower end of um, 0.1 volts and the higher end. So it'll be like 0 0.1, 0 0.9, 0 0.1, 0 0.9, 0 0.7, 0 0.8. And that is a well-behaving O2 sensor. If you have a, an app like Talk with the dongle, you can actually graph it and see the amplitude like this. And what happens is, um, when the car's in closed loop, and it's reading off the O2 sensor, and ev all the mixture is perfect, you'll see the reading do this on your um, uh, screen or phone or whatever you're using to measure that. And that is a well-behaving O2 sensor, and that's how we're going to read it on our multimeter here. So I will mention one thing before we get started, is that the O2 sensors respond to the oxygen levels in the exhaust. Now, if you have a flame over there, it can't sense as much oxygen because, you know, it's sort of being bombarded by the flame. Uh, so your readings may be a little strange. If you get the um, flame in such a position where it can heat up this but also get the same amount of oxygen, you will see the multimeter bounce up and down. Um, but you have to get it so perfect. But really, the point of this test is just to make sure it really produces some sort of voltage to make sure it actually works on that front.
So as you can see on the multimeter, we did get a response. So it is uh, producing the voltage based on the oxygen levels. Uh, it was really hard to sort of hold and get that perfect thing, but you could see it kind of bounce in a way. Um, what you cannot do with this method of testing a no 2 sensor is look at response rate and that's how quickly it adjusts. That's really hard to tell with this method and I recommend using a dongle in the EC, um, read the ECU for that so we can actually see a graph. And again I'll put another video on that so you can see that. But this is a good manual way of doing it. If your engine is really bad and it has a really rich or lean conditions and these aren't giving valid readings correctly or you don't really have a car to test it on right now for whatever reason so you do have uh, other methods and this is one of them so i hope it helped you and thanks for watching